All right, well, this is what's called a uh, seat knee. All right, so last time we were together, we put together a, uh, a seat riser, and this is a knee, which is basically a generic term for anything that braces up, or uh, a more generic term would be a buttress, okay? Um, you know, I, I, try, I don't like people to rely on plans and patterns that much, but, you know, I put my head to it and I looked at those plans for a long time, trying to think of a way that I could explain to you folks at home how to make these yourself. And, you know, without teaching you how to loft a boat, I kind of failed at that. So I am going to include patterns for these with all the boats. What you should know, though, is that this is a customizable thing. You know, the seat that I'm going to do will come out for the, for the back here. It's going to come out to about here. It'll round in and then go back over there. So it's just going to be a small little platform seat for the back of the boat. Probably never anybody's going to sit there because there'll be a seat there and then a rowing seat and then a forward seat. Um, but somebody might. You, know, you may want to put your dog back here. Um, but more than anything is it covers up this whole area here and it kind of finishes the boat off. So this is a little bit tricky, um, but certainly not impossible. But you are going to need, uh, you're going to need to follow me closely on this one, so listen up. All right, so like I said, I'm going to get a pattern with this. And uh, that pattern will look something like this. All right, now I have made the pattern so that they are at a 90 degree angle. If you want to get fancy with them later, you can, but the 90 degree, 90 degree angle helps you out a lot because what you're going to do is you're going to take a piece of flat stock, and this, you know, this is uh, ash, same thing that we're making everything else out of here. And what that allows you to do, as long as you mill your, your wood down to the right angle here, is you've got two sides done for you already, okay? So the only thing left for you to do is cut this curve, easily done with either a jigsaw, a scroll saw, or a uh, bandsaw if you have one of those. All right, and when you are done, you'll have something that looks like this. All right, so I made two of them because I got one for each side here, obviously. Um, and then the only other thing you have to do after that is you're gonna have to angle this. When it's done and it's flat, it's, you know, your boat is compound curves everywhere you look, so it's going to shoot off in that direction. Well, you don't want that. You want it to shoot straight across the boat. Well, you're going to notice if you put it down flat here that you've got this gap. Well, the only way to get that gap is to sand this whole thing at an angle. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. You can put this in a bench vise and, and um, you know, uh, take a rash to it and then sand it down and all that. I take it to my spindle sander and I put the table at a little angle and five minutes later I have a nice smooth curve going there. Okay, So uh, you know, the spindle sander, you've seen us use it throughout this boat on a number of projects uh, in the boat. You can pick up an inexpensive one for you know 120 bucks or so. Um, if you're gonna invest the time and energy on making this boat I'd probably recommend getting one of those. All right, so the concept here is when you are done sanding that, again, you're going to lay it right on the boat and it'll shoot straight across. Now, this one's already in, obviously. Um, and this, so far, has been a two-step process. And there's a couple more steps to go, but let me kind of explain what I've done here so far. In order to get this to the boat, you can see that clamping this is really not an option. So, what we did is we used instant epoxy. Instant is kind of a misnomer, it's not instant at all. It's about five minutes, and some people actually call it five minute epoxy. If you get a kit from us, it'll be included in the kit with instructions on how to use it. But essentially, you just mix it up, uh, and then you paint it on there, and then you sit here and you hold this for the next five minutes. And at the end of five minutes, you can let it go, and it's not gonna go anywhere. So it um, stiffens up in five minutes, it takes about half of the stuff that we send out to you, it takes about a half hour, for it to pretty much cure, and then the next day you can sand it and do the next step. And the next step here was a fillet, okay? Fillet, same kind of fillet we've done everywhere else and showed you. It's simple enough, you mix it up till it's like pudding with the sawdust or the, uh, the uh, wood flour. And then I just squeeze a little out using my syringe, and I take the spoon and I wipe it, and I wipe it over here. Now because of the angle here, I lifted up that side of the boat and I pushed it down to try to give me as little running problem as possible. 
but I just stuck around for about a half hour until it firmed up and then we were good to go. While I was doing that, by the way, I put a fillet in here all along the seat riser. Okay, the reason for all this is because the instant epoxy isn't going to give me all the strength I need and the epoxy that we put on the seat risers isn't going to give me all the strength that I need. So the next step is to finish doing the fillet by using fiberglass cloth. Now in the case of this, because it's such a small area applied um, and there's going to be so much pressure on it if somebody's sitting on it, we're going to do double layer of glass. So what that means is I'm going to put a two inch piece of tape here so it'll go up here inch, inch and a half, three, two, three inches and it'll come down here inch and a half or so. Okay, and then I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to do the same thing here on the back side as well. I've got to fill it on the back side. And then once that's dry, I'll trim that off. I'm going to give that three days or so to pretty much dry out and cure because then I'm going to sand it so that I can feather it. And then after I feather it, I'm going to come back and I'm going to go past that layer of cloth here about another inch, inch and a half or so. And then I'm going to come up and do the entire side of this. All right. So the net result is this thing here is being held against the boat by basically two strong hands. Right. I've got fiberglass on this side, fiberglass this side, and I've also got epoxy underneath here, and that should be enough to hold it really tight. I'm going to do the same thing along the seat rises going down the side of the boat. I'm going to put a piece of fiberglass tape going all the way down. Now, because of the size of that, it's only three quarters of an inch thick, I'm not going to be able to do two pieces. But because of the length of it, you know, it's eight feet long, there's so much um, epoxy holding that on, and, and there'll be eight feet of fiberglass cloth on the top and on the bottom that I'm not worried about. It. It's gonna be plenty strong. Because what we're gonna do, this is a, a wide boat. You know, this, this particular boat is uh, a high 40s in, uh, in overall beam that we're gonna put spindles underneath the seats. Now there's a couple of reasons for that. First, um, they look really pretty. Um, second, it is very traditional if you look at uh, 100 year old um, um, boats, uh, wine glass stem boats, you'll see that um, these white hulls had uh, spindles going underneath the seats. It was just kind of a tradition. Uh, and third, it's support. It's support in the middle of the boat um, underneath that seat where it's going to have the most pressure. All right, so to recap, patterns on the wood using the exact same spray glue that we use to do the forms, right? Cop it glue, spray it down, put the pattern on, cut it out and then bevel it with a sander. Once that's done, we're gonna mix up some instant epoxy, apply it to the boat. After that's dried for a day or so, you're gonna come back, you're gonna do your fillets. You're gonna do a three inch piece of glass, and then you're gonna do a piece of glass which will extend past the first one and all the way up the side, and that'll give you plenty of strength. All right, so what I'm going to do now is show you how to put one of these on. Now. I believe myself to be a decent designer uh, and think I know what I'm doing, but I am constantly checking, double checking and triple checking myself throughout the entire project. So the reality is, is if I did everything right to this point, I should be able to measure down from here and the, the plans will tell you how far down this is. I should be able to measure down the other side at the same location and have it go straight across. Theoretically, that's absolutely true. In reality, we check these things. So I've got this small batten here that I'm gonna put on with just a spring clamp. And then I got another one here. And then all I'm going to do is find something that I can extend out across there and see where it hits on the boat. And happily, this hits at exactly the same spot over there that it is over here. And what that means is I am indeed going straight across. And that's a beautiful thing. If, if that were not the case and you had to fix something, this would be the time to fix it, right? So say for some odd reason, this was tilting up, then you would have to sand and feather that down so it was tilting straight across the boat. And if it was going down, then you would have to back chisel to make sure that again, it was going straight across the boat. So, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if I did a perfect job on the plans and you did a perfect job building your boat. Um, 
it's a boat. Everything's round, everything's curvy. There are no plumb bobs, there are no squares. So check, double check, and triple check yourself. So uh, it's easy, easily done simply by uh, putting this small piece of wood and then extending this across and seeing where it hits on the boat. And happily, this hits exactly where the tape is, which is the same measurement down over there that it is over here. Another quick note about the plans. Uh, in the plans, it's going to tell you how far down this is from the shear line, okay? So that, that's another place where you can go awry. I mean, this shear line could be an eighth of an inch off from that shear line simply from sanding. You know, so yeah, it's best to double check that. So I'm going to give you a measurement that says from this shear line measured down this much, make a mark, put a piece of tape, and that's where your knee is going to go. The reason I don't do it from the underneath of the gunnel is because, you know, we talked about the gunnel and you may choose to have a bigger gunnel, especially if you didn't get a kit, you may choose to have a gunnel that's a quarter inch bigger than this or a half inch bigger than this. You know, maybe you're going to do a lot of really tough rowing, a lot of tough sanding and you, say, you think you want your gunnel to be bigger. Fine. Just take the measurement that I'm going to give you and deduct the, thick, the thickness of the gunnel and that's your new measurement going down. All right, so if the plans tell you that it is five and seven eighths from the shear line down here, I've got a one inch piece of uh, gunnel here. That means I'm four and seven eighths down to the top of this. That simple. And again, same thing putting those, uh, the uh, seat risers on the side. You just have to deduct for that. Okay, um, so I got my mark. I know where it's going. I've already cut it. I've already sanded it. So I'm going to mix up some instant epoxy and I'm going to apply it to the other side of that boat. All right, so this is kind of a no fooling around kind of job here. Uh, I've got my um, instant epoxy part A and part B sitting here open and ready to go. I've got my piece sitting right here ready to go and I've got an acid brush right there ready to go. Um, now. You know, you don't, depending on what you need, you, you don't want to mix up a whole lot of this stuff because you can only use so much of it. And for this particular job, we just don't need that much. So I'm going to cut myself a little stirring stick here out of a piece of cedar. Um, I have a small measuring cup and I am going to do a total of 10 milliliters here, which is basically two teaspoons. I've already scuffed up the side of the boat where it's going to be going. So now it's just a matter of mixing it up. So I start with this particular epoxy. I do five milliliters. It's a one to one ratio. So I will do five milliliters. And then I will come back and do five more with the hardener. And if you don't think you got it right, throw it out. It's not worth making the mistake. If you do too much of the hardener, it'll be real gooey when it dries. And you just don't want that. So, you don't have all the time in the world to mix this up. You need to make sure that you mix it thoroughly. That means get it all down off the sides, get it all off your, your uh, stirring rod here. And you've got about 30 seconds to mix the heck out of this stuff before it's going to start to do its thing. All right, so make sure you know where you're going. All this should have been laid out before you ever started mixing. fast but work neat. Now I happen to know because I did the other side that I pretty much need this entire batch. So I just now mount. Okay so as you're doing this you're gonna eyeball straight across and make sure you're heading in the right direction. So I know what line I'm on this way because these particular knees are right at the first form. And because I use staples, I know exactly where that is. I'm looking right at it. 
and I know how far down I need to be. So now it's a matter of me just not fidgeting for the next five minutes. And I've been thinking about it and I think I'm going to make you sit there and watch me for all five minutes of it. Yeah, or maybe not. Well, this has been sitting for about 10 minutes now, so you know, I feel comfortable continuing to work, although I'm not going to take a hammer to it to see, see, how, to see how strong it is. So I'm going to very gently now continue to work because I need to get a back brace here. You know, I need something going across the back here to hold the back of the seat. And, uh, you know, it, again, I can go to plans. The plans will tell me how far down that is. Um, but at the end of the day, the plans matter, but you got to make it right, right? So if I just simply take a stick and I extend it backwards and then make a little line, and then I take a stick over here and gently, because this is still dry, and do the exact same thing. Hopefully, I got my two marks here, and this mark, if I extend it, comes to the top of the second strip after the dock area that I did. And if I look over here and I extend this line, it does the exact same thing. I'm sitting right at the exact same strip, at the exact same place, which means I must be on the right track here somewhere. Okay, now I need to build a little riser for the back of this thing. Now, you know, there are crazy compound curves going on back here. You've got a transom going this way. You've got a boat that's got an S going on here. Um, you can spend a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of time building the perfect seat riser to fit right in there. Not to mention the fillets that you're going to have to deal with. I choose not to. I don't think anybody's ever going to see it. I'm going to make sure that I got my fillets and in my uh, fiberglass everywhere so everything looks good so I'm not overly worried about it. So I make it uh, just a little bit short um, but I make it so that it spans those two marks that I just did and it'll go right here. Alright so again the idea is the seat plank will come back and sit right on the top of this. Now there is an angle to this right because the transom's at an angle and the seat's going off here and it's got to hit this flat and hit this flat. Now, again, I, I could have put you through some real pain there, but I decided not to do that. So, on the plans, you will find that there will be a diagram of the rear seat riser, and it will actually show you the angle that you need to cut this at. So, you know, quite simply, all I did is I took the exact same stock that I used up here in the gunnels. I set the table saw at about 19 degrees for this particular boat, and I ran it through. And hopefully, when I go from that to... The knees in front, it will be flat. Whoops, flat. And by gosh, it is. So that's just a beautiful thing. Okay, so um, same thing as before. Now I'm going to just use regular epoxy with thickener. Um, you can certainly use the instant epoxy here if you want to. I'm going to use the thickener because right after this I'm going to take the extra epoxy and I'm going to go right up the other gunnel and uh, do my fillet. So that when all, all this is dry I can do some sanding and some fiberglassing and get all this stuff shored up. Alright, so I will be clamping this on. <laughs> 